give the Lord the hands of praise. Hallelujah. How many of you are happy to be in the house of the Lord? Can I receive your hands? Hallelujah. Yes. Today I want to talk about a subject I believe it's very fundamental and core to our Christian belief. The last time I stood on this altar on Sunday, I believe it was the last Sunday of May to preach. It was the last Sunday of May when I was preaching here. I was talking about the Holy Spirit. So today we, we spoke about do not grieve him. But now it's so important I carry you along. Because without the Holy Spirit, you can never be a Christian. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Without the Holy Spirit, you can never be a Christian. Your Christianity without the Holy Spirit, it's a joke. Look at yourself. Can you really say Jesus is on your side? Can you really say you are off? You get what I'm trying to say. Because the Holy Spirit is not there. So today I want us to talk about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because you need these fundamentals, stages, encouragement to make your Christianity reality. How to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Every Christian must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Every Christian must be what? Must be filled. We are babies. I cannot start teaching you how to run. Or else I haven't taught you how to walk. So we can't talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit now. Because you don't know the infilling of the Holy Spirit. When you read the last verse of that book of Acts, you realize after persecution, Apostle Paul had to experience in Antioch, the Christian were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. This feeling of the Holy Spirit brings joy even in the midst of persecutions. How can you say you are filled with the Holy Spirit when you no longer have joy of your salvation? Many of you here, the joy of salvation has gone. Do you get what I'm trying to say? You just come to church because you were pushed. You come to church, you, you hold the mic here, you are singing, just because you have a good voice. But the joy is no more there. Then the Holy Spirit is not there. People of God. This is why David, even after he has sinned against the Lord, cries back to the Lord and say, even if you can remove anything from me, two things I request that they remain. Do not let your spirit depart from me and restore the joy of my salvation. I want to know that do you still have that joy of your salvation? 
or now you are trying to look for another church that is better than this, you will go to another church that is better than this. In the long run, what took you out from this church will still take you out from that church. Because within you, you don't have a joy. When a person say, I lost my peace, I lost my peace. What kind of language is that? What kind of language is that? I lost my peace. I go to church, but I don't have peace anymore. I go there, I don't have peace anymore. Do you get what I'm trying to say? You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why do you need to be refilled and filled? It's because you are a cracking vessel. You still have offense here and there. You still have unfaithfulness here and there. You still do things the way you want here and there. Some of you, I believe, if, if it's a chair, you are sitting next there, you are not happy when the usher put you there. You said, nah, this usher now is making me feel like I'm not important. Why can he put me in the overflow? But when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, things like that, you know, it's by divine arrangement. Who knows, maybe when I come out of this place, I will go where you are. Maybe before I came here, I had a vision to know that there is a person sitting on this whole number. What, 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 I have to go there. Me, I will just go. You don't know that I'm counting. And then when I count, I come to you. You don't know. You want to, to remove where so, this is, this is the joy, the joy of salvation. So, you need to be filled with the Holy because you are a great vessel. When you are in trouble, you speak lie, a little bit of lie, to mix it, so that you are, you are secured. You are, you are that great vessel. So, you continuously need to be refilled. Because any time, if you are not filling up, it's coming out. You are becoming empty. Hallelujah. So this is what I want to talk about because it's important to know how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. To know Jesus is to know the Holy Spirit. You never serve Jesus without the Holy Spirit. You can read your Bible from Genesis to revelation it will just be a mere history because you are not filled with the Holy Ghost tell your neighbor say neighbor you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost so maybe it's so important that I teach you how to walk before we can talk, because baptism of the Holy Spirit is ultimate. That one, you don't negotiate. That one, you are a property of God. You walk when God says walk. You speak when God says speak. You, anything about you is about God. It's a baptism. You don't, when you are baptized, please, there is no need of being refilled because you are overflowing. You are, you know, you know, listen, is there a need of trying to fill up a well? Or a well is, 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 on its own, it fills itself up. It cleanses itself up. So when you are baptized, you are like a well. When you are filled, you are like a swimming pool. You can be dirty. And then we need to fill you again to clean. You understand what I'm talking about? But when you are baptized, you tend to be, you, God, you, you become a source. The jo I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. When you are baptized, you are not supposed to be refilled so that the anointing becomes fresh. You are becoming fresh every day. His mercies are new what? Every morning. But when you are filled, but everyone, before we get to graduation, of baptism, we must pass grade 12. We must go to entry level of university. Then we can graduate. Do you get what I'm trying to say? How many of you are willing, are waiting for the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit? 
Do you need that fillment of the Holy Spirit in your life? You need it. It will make you smile even in the midst of challenges. It will make you joyful even when people are insulting you. That is the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Let us go to the book of Acts. Chapter 10. We are going to talk more of Apostle Peter's experience. Acts chapter 10 verse 1 to verse number 5 and then we will go to 44 and 46. Another one will open the book of John chapter 14 verse number 24. And then also the, look, the book of Luke 24, 49. You will get something there. Even the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse number 10. 9 to 12, you will get something there. Colossians chapter number 3. But we will not get into everything I'm talking about. So, let's go to the book of Acts chapter number 10. So, do you hear what I'm saying? So, today I teach you how to walk. Hmm? Don't be too ambitious, brother. Don't be too ambitious. In the things of God, no matter how brilliant you are, you will never be given double promotion. You have to go through every step. It's important. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Yeah. Every, step every step is important. It's important. I, I, I will love you to be like me. But you have to go through a process. This is why Apostle Paul one time he stood in front of the church of Corinthians and said, you know, I would love you to speak tongues like the way I speak because I speak tongue more than you. So, we will talk. Why we continue to be filled is for us to attain the graduation, the baptism, because this baptism is an inheritance. It's a right of those who believed in our Lord Jesus Christ. It's an inheritance of the saints. This baptism. Where you are no longer yourself. For a Christian to be a Christian. Must be filled. With the Holy Spirit. Every Christian must be what? Then you will be a true Christian. But if you are not filled. That's why we have Christians, we have true Christians. I don't know where you are fully. Those who are true Christians are those who are filled with the Holy Spirit and directed by the Holy Spirit. But those who are Christians, it's fake and real. You know your money there in your pocket, the one that you love so much. There is fake and real. Everything in life, fake and real. Even your, 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 your attire, you know these labels you love. There is fake and real. You can wear that one of real, another one appear wearing one of fake. And these days there is a semi, semi original. You can't differentiate where. This is what Christianity is becoming now. Semi. We look like Christian, all of us. Hallelujah. So please allow me because I want to talk. I want to teach you. Because this is what you need to take home and practice. This is a practical message. I want to give it to you. Because I believe that if we can all be filled with the Holy Spirit, some of these small things that we, we are worried about, they will make no matter. Huh? They will make what? No matter. So, let's go. Hey, I said that I'm reading. I'm coming back now and then. Let's go and read. Acts chapter 10. Uh, Acts chapter 10. Are you there? Say amen if you are there. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, me, I'm coming now. Thank you. Acts chapter 10. We'll read verse number 1. And then to verse number six. The Bible says, there was a man 
in Caesarea called Cornelius. There was a man in Caesarea called Cornelius. A centurion of what was called Italian regiment. A devout man, one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms gener generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in the vision an angel of God coming in saying to him, this vision was clear. Imagine, the vision was clear. This, listen, here we are talking about a man who is not yet filled with the Holy Spirit, but loving God. But the vision was what? Clear. Imagine when the Holy Spirit comes, how it's going to be. But you, you see vision is not clear. Everything you see is not what? I can't remember clear my dreams. I can't remember, you know, you know, what? I can't remember. What is that? You are living a dangerous life. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Samuel, behave yourself. And when he observed him, he was afraid because he observed the angel. He was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? He said to him, your prayers and your arms, arms, it's gifts, ne? have come up for a memorial before God. Now, send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. Let's go 44. You can read the whole verse so that you can understand everything that is happening. Let's go 44. While Peter, now Peter is come. Simon Peter has come. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. And those of circumcision who believed were astonished as many as come with Peter. Because the gift of the Holy Spirit has been poured out to the Gentiles. On, uh, has been poured out to the Gentiles also. For they heard them speaking with tongues and magnify God. Yes. For you, for a Christian to be a Christian, must be filled with the Holy Ghost. You cannot get involved in God's projects without the Holy Ghost. Doing so is to tantamously exposing yourself to danger, huge affliction, and wounding your life. Yes. People can say Jesus is Lord without the help of the Holy Spirit. But remember what happened to the sons of Sceva in the book of Acts chapter 19 verse 13. Hear me well what I'm saying again. If you do God's project without the Holy Spirit, it is to tantamount to huge affliction, huge pain, and huge destruction to your life. Many are preaching, many are singing, 
Many are doing this without the Holy Spirit. And this at the end inflicts affliction to their, to their lives. This is why you continue to misbehave. Because the Holy Spirit is not there. People of God. The Holy Spirit, he will not come where he is needed, but he comes where he is desired. Everyone needs the Holy Spirit, but not everyone will receive the Holy Spirit because not everyone desire him. You must desire the Holy Spirit. This is what the Bible says in the book of Matthew. If you who are wicked can give your children good when they ask this, you don't give them stone. When they ask this, you don't give them a snake. What about those who will ask? You need to ask. You need to desire him. He doesn't come by default. When you desire him, then you will prepare for him. Because he is not going to go where he is not prepared for. Am I making sense? I say he doesn't go where he is needed. But he goes where he is what? Desired. My daughter, you must desire him for him to come to you. And many of you believe this feeling baptism of the Holy Spirit is only for the ministers of God. No, else it's not like that. You are part. He loves you just as he loves any of his apostles. He loves you just as he loves any of his prophets. But often times we afflict pain in our lives by doing God's project without the help of the Holy Spirit. You are doing your ushering no Holy Spirit. You are singing, no Holy Spirit. You are having a title, I'm a disciple, I'm an evangelist, no Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm an apostle, no Holy Spirit. And when he is prepared for, he wants to be himself in you. was a Gentile. According to the traditions of that time, he was not even deserving. But he loved the Lord. To the point whereby Peter was somewhere praying and Peter had a vision. And then Peter said, ah, I cannot eat what is dirty. Then God said, don't call what I have blessed dirty. What I have cleaned. What the Lord has cleaned dirty. He went there. It was a trouble. Hmm? You know when you go, because he was baptized. He was baptized. Even if he didn't want to go, he was pushed because he cannot do it by himself. He cannot control himself. You know when you are baptized, you are fully, you are fully you are even sealed. You are overflowing. You are a well. Even those next to you, they start experiencing the grace. This is why they will try to destroy you. They think when they think you are down, tomorrow they see you up again. They say, ah, ah, what is going on with this one? When they think that they, it's over with you, you appear again. Ah. What is it? Because you are baptized. So, let's leave that. Let's go to the feeling. 
Because I don't want to teach you to run before I can teach you to walk. Because there is no need for me to teach you to run. You will be running and you start falling down. So, when he arrived, Peter, he said, you know, he started by, by fighting himself. You know, we are not supposed to be coming here. But the angel appeared to me. Not at my will. At God's will. Not mine, but God's. To be here, what do you want me to do for you now? You are here, I'm here. They said, where to the angel appeared? He said, we should call for you. You will talk to us. The Bible says, when Peter started talking, the Holy Spirit came down. Came upon all who were there because they believed. This is why I said the Holy Spirit doesn't go where he is needed. He goes where he is desired. Do you desire the Holy Spirit? Do you desire the Holy Spirit? HGGC, do you desire the Holy Spirit? This is what will make us church. This is what will make us true Christians. But now let's talk about how to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Remember in the book of Luke 24 verse 49, he said, wait and tarry in Jerusalem until you are what? Till you are filled. So, now I am going to teach you how to wait, how to prepare, how to tarry so that you are filled. So that it will be easy for him to see you as a vessel and baptize you. You need to overflow. Number one, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Say to your neighbor, set your heart free from offense. People of God, God cannot come to a spirit or a heart that is bound with grudges, offense, unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred. One way or the other, every one of you here has one or two offense. And this disturbed the Holy Spirit to fill you. If your heart is disturbed, my brother, if your heart is having offense, your spirit become caged. And a caged spirit it's a useless instrument in the hands of of the Holy Ghost. Uncage your heart. Uncage yourself. Offense can come. Offense has to come. This is what the Bible says. It is impossible to live in this world. Without getting opportunity to be what? To be offended. But. It becomes dangerous. When you hold into it. Because it goes straight into your heart. And even Jesus wants to go straight into your heart. You need to forgive. Sometimes it's very Painful to forgive. Am I not talking true? Sometimes it's so painful to forgive because sometimes you forgive even if you are not wrong. Listen to me. Whether you are right or wrong, you have no right to hold on to what? To offense. You have 
no right to hold on to offense. They cheated me. What, what, what? Listen, whether they cheated you or they didn't cheat at you, but holding offense, it's a crime to God. If I want to be fit, listen to me, my choir, praise and worship. If any time you desire to see yourself, when you see God comes and bake you up, offenses around your lives should be ironed out. Because as long as you hold offense, you will use your natural gift and it will cause what? What did I say it will cause? Huge affliction, wounding you, causing destruction, destroying you. When I stretch my hand, I say, be delivered. And I'm holding offense. I am inflicting myself. I am doing what? I am inflicting myself. Listen, free your heart from offense. Then you will start to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the first thing. While you are tearing, release yourself. If I had to speak in my language, they will continue. When they see you are happy, they will do another remark about you. No! Leave them. Leave them. Because you know your goals. You want graduation. You want what? You want graduation. The baptism. So, say, free yourself. Anything happens, grudge. Anything happens, offense. Anything happens, there. No, child of God. This is why I said you are a great vessel. Even if the Holy Spirit has come, you know, even if the Holy Spirit has come, when you do that, you, you, you reduce his capability. It's like you are a bottle entering a lying mate or a cup that is throwing away water. So, am I talking to someone here? That husband that left you, forgive. Huh? That man that has caught you, listen, if you want feeling, if you want graduation, unless if you don't want graduation, but one thing I can tell you is that Christianity can never be real until you know the Holy Spirit. In life of ministry, in life of everything, there are many things that are happening. Can I tell you, if it was not because of the comforter, I could have run mad with many things that are happening around. But I continue to smile, I continue to push on, because the Holy Spirit is there. Forgive my brother. Listen, the one, my sister, who is hurt more by unforgiveness, it's you. Those who hurt you, there are two people who hurt us. Those who are intentionally hurting us and those who are unintentionally. Sometimes you are holding offense of someone who was not even aware that he has hurt you. And this individual, he's starting to ask me, why is this person no longer talking to me? What is going on? And maybe he was a breakthrough to your career. The same person. You hold to offense. Some are intentional. This one who are intentional are more dangerous. Because when they have done it, when you forgive them, <laughs> they repeat it again. Can I, can I, can I get, you, you get what I'm trying to say? When, when, when they see that, let me tell you, what your enemy needs, it's your tears. The enemy hates your smile like nobody's business. If your enemy sees you smiling, if your enemy sees you progressing, he dies from the inside. 
Number two, while you are in Terry, waiting, speak to yourself. Say, neighbor, speak to yourselves in Psalms. We need to speak to ourselves in Psalm, in hymns, in spiritual songs. Make melodies in your heart. Make what? Make melodies in your heart. Speak to yourself. In Psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs, you start to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What am I trying to say when I say make, speak to yourself? I am trying to say to you, make your hearts be engaged with God. Listen, don't allow your heart to control you. Control your heart. As I am speaking in front of you like this, you need to continuously speak in your heart. Take more of me. Give me more of you. Oh God, listen. If there is no neutral heart, no me, I don't talk to my heart. No, me, I'm neutral. Oh, if you don't give your heart assignment, your heart will find assignment for yourself. For itself. Listen, engage your heart. Because if you don't give your heart assignment, my daughter, you'll start seeing and handsome men here. You, my son, you'll start seeing a beautiful woman here. Look at that lady, so beautiful. Am I okay? Look at this man. Hey, where, where did he buy this shirt now? Hey, it's like I like this shirt. I will buy it. Look, okay, look at his shoes. Oh, my God. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, ah, ah, ah. look at his wife. Ah. Me too, I want to be married by a pastor. So it's your heart while I'm preaching. It's your, it's what? Because you didn't pain your heart. Direct your heart. Let your heart not think what it wants. Be in control of your heart. If you can't control your heart, you will start feeling like you are hungry now. And then sugar diabetes will go up. Or high blood will go up. I'm, 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 I'm getting hungry. Uh, hey. They understand because you are not engaging what? Your heart. Listen to me. The real battle, it's in your heart. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. The real battle, it's in your heart. You see this one here? You say, oh, this one, this one, oh my God. This one, this one is, is the one who's going to get one on one and me, I'm not going to get it. Your heart is already, will this man see me today or not? Hey, well, you know, on Friday, this man said he wants to see me. Will the usher remember me? Will the usher allow me? Hmm, and I want to talk to this man. I want to talk to this man. I want to talk to him. I want to talk. If, if, if your heart is so much, you will even stand up. Pastor, pastor, I want to see you. Because your heart is what? It's not controlled. It thinks. It, it jumps up and down. It runs here and there. It goes where it wants. Engage your heart. How do you tame your heart? By speaking to yourself in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Make melodies in your heart. Listen to me. He doesn't go where he is needed. He goes where he is desired. If he was going everywhere he is needed, he could be with everyone because everyone needs him. So, engage your heart. As you are engaging your heart, vision becomes clear. It looks like Cornelius. Anna is a charity fair. He saw a clear vision. But when you are speaking in tongues, you are doing everything. Even you, I'm not talking about a vision. Even your dream. You know dream is lesser than the vision. Even your dream. You dream dreams, you see visions. Even your dream is not clear. 
Even when you dream, you don't understand what you are dreaming. You are going everywhere. Interpret for me. Well, who is the Holy Spirit in you? Hallelujah. The time you get hold of your heart, then you are about to be filled. The real battle is in your heart. The time you... Then you're about to be filled. You understand? You get what I'm trying to say? Then you're about to be filled. So, if you can get hold of your heart, sir, you can get hold of your life. The Bible says, as the man thinketh, so what? So is he. What's full of your mind? What do you consume every day? As the man thinketh, so is he. Don't be just a prophet. Be filled and be baptized. Don't be just a protocol. Be filled and be what? And when you are filled, you will have another eye that sees where else people they don't see. In your job, in your assignment for God. Oh my God. I tell even our worshiping team of one time I said, when we prepare, we do what we call lineups and everything. It's good to prepare. But if we are filled, sometimes God takes over what we have prepared. We have to move by what God is doing. We don't need to push him to where we want him. We have to move by what he is wanting us to do. That makes us his children. That makes us his what? Children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you, are you with me? My good daughter, are you with me? Engage your heart. Psalms. It's very good to know. Read the book of Psalms and start writing the promises of God. Start writing the praises. Start writing. You, you know, you know, if you are a, a, a worshiper, the more you read the book of Psalms, even the revelation to write the songs. To feed your heart. Sometimes you get to the spiritual song. Spiritual songs. Speak to yourself in Psalms. Speak to yourself in songs. Make melodies in your heart. Hmm? Hmm. When you are not free, you, when, when your heart is not engaged with God, anything can trick her. And make you lose control. So engage your heart with God. Tame your heart. You do what? Tame your heart. Put it under subjection. Number three. While you are tearing. How? We, we are still to say. How to be filled with the Holy Ghost. How to do what? What is number one? Free your heart from what? What is number two? Engage your heart. Speak to yourself to a, with what? Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, and make what? Melodies in your heart. Hmm? The joy of the Lord must be your strength. As I said, when... Look, look at Apostle Paul. Imagine. They stone him, they do whatever. The Bible says, I believe, maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but pastors, I believe even if the Bible says they thought he was dead. I think someone who, tra who translated from Greek to English or to whatever, he's the one who missed the point there. I believe he was dead. And the Bible says the believers came around him. In one accord, he rose up. 
When I look at it, listen, God, the Holy Spirit can make you travel times. You could even see when Moses was writing the book of Genesis. You can even, listen to me, I told you that, uh, I, I can't remember I was speaking about what I said. Sometimes God can even make one of the old prophets your mentor. Anytime you go to your prayer room, he appears. You don't know how deep spiritual life is. Spirituality is deep. And the more God opens spirituality, the more you see yourself unworthy. He keeps you humble. Any man of God who is able to tell us that you can see what is happening, the standard of deliverance here, yeah? the, the anointing here, yeah? is because he's trying to defend something. There is no anointing there. If really God is there, the more he uses you, the more he makes you to be humble. And the two ingredients of servants of God is love. Because the Bible says, faith works with what? In love. So, let's not go. Number three, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to found yourself in the weight. You need to found yourself where? Christ and the weight are what? When the Holy Spirit comes to us, according to that book of John 14, 24, he will remind us. So if the Holy Spirit fills you without the word, what will he remind you for? What will he come to do? To overflow with the word, with the Holy Spirit in our lives, we need to be grounded in the word of God. Tell your neighbor, say, be grounded in the word of God. What? Listen to me, people of God. While you are in tarry, while you are in waiting, ground yourself. Eat the word. Read your Bible. Slowly, attentively, and what? And repeatedly. Ground, 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 brother, ground yourself. Speak to yourself through scriptures. It is impossible to obey the written word of God without the Holy Spirit. Ground yourself. Down. Ground yourself with the word. With the word. Because the spirit will be released to the extent of the weight in you. Or to the degree of the weight in you. The weight in you is the one that limits the spirit. There is a spirit without limits. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Do you get what I'm trying to say? The weight in you. So, if the small word, the small spirit, the strong word, I know sometimes how hard it is to read your Bible, but read it. When you are saturating yourself with the scriptures, conversation, oh my God, the prayer is scriptural prayer. The scriptural prayer produces the power of God. When you are saturating yourself with the scriptures, you overflow. You overflow. And when you start overflowing with the, with the, with the spirit, you can even share with others. When there, are, there are many people, even pastors, who want to do impartation to other pastors, whereas themselves they are empty. When you are empty, you are empty. When you are empty, you are what? You are empty, my brother. Feel yourself. No, now we are having pastoral program. Pastors who need mentorship. Pastors. This is why 
listen to me. This is why you can't see me in the, uh, I have a mentorship program here. If God wants me to be your mentor, it will happen by divine arrangement. It is God who will arrange it. You understand? And then in the process of doing that, me too, I will give you some tests to see how serious you are. Sometimes I will put you in isolation, not talk to you. You send me messages, I blue tick you. Not that I'm busy. The Holy Spirit is the one directing me. I want to see the reality of this man. I want to see the reality of this man. You understand? So I'm saying to you, be grounded in the word. My brother, the amount of the word in you equals to the spirit that will be released, the decree of the spirit that will be released in you. When you are grounded with the word, you will live with Jesus. You will, you will eat with Jesus. You will sleep with Jesus. You will talk with Jesus. What I'm trying to say. I say when you talk to Jesus, you, you will live with the Holy Spirit. You will eat with the Holy You know that there are food that the Holy Spirit can give you. I'm on another dimension. Let's come back. I'm teaching you how to walk. The more you ground yourself in the word, the more you obey the word. And remember, it's impossible to obey the word without the help of the Holy Spirit. The more, you, you, the more your life is saturated with the scriptures, you start overflowing. When you open your mouth, miracles happen. When you open your mouth, you speak heaven. I try to... I try to even when you go anywhere, you can be in the mall. Someone will say, who, what, 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 who are you? What is happening? Sometimes, maybe, I will go to shop. I was not aware until I became aware. Oh, sometimes I go to shop, overflowing too much, opened my eyes. My eyes are like at last. When they look at me, they start to get disturbed. So the spirit of the prophet is under the control of what? But there is a time where if you continue to go deeper, you will not be able to control the spirit. The spirit takes over. And this is the level we need to reach. And when he takes over, he starts giving you habits. You will not do this before you do this. You will not do this before you do this. This is how you do. This is how you even, even to brush your teeth. He is the one teaching you how to brush your teeth. Ah, even how to comb your hair. He starts to be, though, where else you know how to comb your hair? He starts to tell you, no, don't comb your hair like this. Comb it like this. The Holy Spirit. Because he wants to take possession over your life. I want to ask you a question. How many of you want Jesus to possess their lives? Do you want to, Jesus to possess your life? Listen, the last thing. I'm, just, I'm now because of time. Have a desire to have him. Have a desire to have what? To have the Holy Spirit. Because he, as I said, he doesn't go where he's needed. But he goes where he is desired. Your desire will push you to free your heart from offense. Will push you to speak to yourselves in hymns, psalms, spiritual songs. Make melodies in your heart. And your desire will push you to be grounded in the way. Then you start feeling infilment. You will start feeling infilment. Even on the second one, the second fell. When you start doing the second one, the feeling of the Holy Spirit already comes. The third one, the fourth one, you are baptized. You are baptized. Hmm. We start seeing identity changing. We start seeing, ah, but this man, what is happening in this man? Let me say, let me tell you, the more God takes himself in you, he removes you from certain things, certain people. And people who are baptized oftentimes, they live a lonely life, isolated life, because they can't fit 
to any. Go have a whole fita. When I'm a sister, but I'm fita everywhere. Brother, but I'm fita everywhere. In Tongue Long, well, how one of our Batama so when I saw some as about our feet. Because you don't have what? The Holy Spirit. As I conclude, I ask you a question. Do you desire to be possessed by the spirit of Jesus? One thing I can tell you, Holy Spirit wants to possess us as Christians. He wants to do what? He wants to possess us. You know, there are two types of possessions. Huh? Evil, possess, evil spirit possession and the Holy Ghost possession. Evil spirit is when the spirit are taking over human personality action. So, it's, it's, it's a demon. It's an evil spirit. We see it every day. How people are killing each other. I happened to be invited to when they were opening this uh, hall here. Things I hear there, they shocked me. When they do their cancel, eh, recopa utsidisa, eh, lela pala mamma mamma, yo wana hai ailenga nyamela, babe bam tola a how to show, eh, banabeso recopa let's go show it to camera at Yamara. Kere away, qua qua, qua qua, evil spirits. Here in qua qua, a child can kill the mother and chop him off. Peace, peace. So, when it's evil spirit, they have taken off. So, there is what we call Holy Spirit possession. Where he, he takes over. Where he does what? So, have a desire for him. When there is desire, there will be fulfillment. Are you aware many people who are falling to sin, everything starts as what? As what? As a desire. Even in the things of the spirit, it has to start as desire. Have a desire for him. The more you are hungry for him, he will do what? He will quench your what? Your thirst. But if you are not reading the word, you are quenching, you are suffocating him. This is why many Christian lives are like what? I like yo yo. Today you are up, today you are down. Today you are up, today you are down. Oh, today I feel God. Tomorrow I don't feel God. Tomorrow I feel God. Your spiritual life, there is problem. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is the spirit that we call Holy Spirit, the spirit that is like Jesus. It's a spirit of truth. It's so true, this spirit, because Jesus is truth. To live with Jesus. Imagine when you are living with Jesus in the same room. Having a spirit of Jesus in you. Let us stand on our feet. God bless you, sweat.